In the previous videos, we learned that Bayesian statistics can be used to solve almost any decision problem. We also learned how to summarize what we know in a posterior distribution. In this video, we will discuss how to make decisions. So given that we have all these uncertainties, how can we then make a decision? And more specifically, we will discuss how we can use the Bayesian framework to make optimal decisions. So let's discuss the Bayesian decision principle. The question here is, how can we use P of theta given Y to make decisions? Examples of decision problems can be how to control a self-driving vehicle, for example. That is, decide on appropriate acceleration, braking and steering input in order to safely and efficiently navigate the current traffic situation. It can also be how to invest money, both if you're running a company or as a private person. We can also look at selecting medicine to give to a patient, if you're a doctor, or what estimate to give a parameter vector that could represent the temperature or distance or any other quantity of interest. So, the basic principle of Bayesian decision theory is simple. It can be summarized like this. So, we want to minimize the expected loss, or more specifically, we want to minimize the posterior expected loss, which is how this posterior distribution comes to play. An alternative and equivalent formulation is to use what's called utility instead. So, since we can replace loss with utility and minimization with maximization, so instead of minimizing expected loss, we can maximize the expected utility. So, this is simple enough, right? But there are some pieces missing here that we haven't really discussed. And that is what a loss function is, but we will do this uh, in this example. So, suppose there is a student who wants to decide whether to take a course or not. In this example, let's suppose that we have some posterior distribution of the quality of the course, having spoken to other students who have taken the course, for instance, and taking our prior knowledge about the topic into account. Based on this, we find that the probability that the course is good is 0.3, that the course is fair is also 0.3, and that the course is bad is 0.4. So the student that also designed a loss function saying that if he or she takes the course uh, and it's good, there's zero loss. So this is a good thing. If he or she takes a course and it's fair, there's a loss of five. And if the course is bad, it's a loss of 30. Similarly, there's a loss associated with not taking the course if it's good, fair, or bad. The question is then, according to this posterior distribution regarding the quality of the course and this, this loss function here, should he or she then take the course or not? From an optimal decision theoretic point of view, the student should make the decision that has the lowest expected posterior loss. So the student should decide to take the course if the expected loss of taking the course is less than the expected loss of not taking the course and vice versa. So, the expected loss for a specific decision is what you get if you multiply the posterior probability with the corresponding loss. So, 0 0.3 times 0, and so forth. And then we sum these up to get the posterior expected loss. So, let's look at the expected loss for taking the course. So, we have 0 0.3 times 0 if the course is good plus 0 0.3 times 5 if the course is fair and 0 0.4 times 30 if the course is bad. If we sum all of this up, we get an expected loss of 10.5 for taking the course. Now, if we look at the expected cost for not taking the course, we have 0 0.3 times 20 plus 0 0.3 times 5 plus 0 0.4 times 0. Now, if we sum all these up, we get a expected loss of 
7.5 for not taking the course. So, we have now computed the expected loss for the two possible decisions. If the students choose to attend the course, then we get an expected loss of 10.5. On the other hand, if the student decides not to take the course, we get expected loss that sums up to 7.5. So the conclusion here is that the students should not attend this course. Now, of course, this toy example has nothing to do with this particular course and that you should all probably still attend this course. Now, let us see if we can introduce some more mathematical notation for this. We often study loss functions instead of utility. So we have a loss function C of theta where theta is the quantity that we're interested in, and where A denotes the decision which is dependent on the outcome of theta. So in the example that we just studied, theta was the quality of the course, and A was the decision if the student should take the course or not. Now, in this course, the decision that we want to make relates to choosing an estimate of theta. So if theta is, for example, the distance to an object that we're interested in, then our estimate is the distance that minimizes our expected posterior loss. So to emphasize that we're actually making a decision on theta, we usually denote our decision as theta hat, which is then our estimate of theta. Now, in this context, the optimal decision can in mathematical terms be described like this. So we would like to find the theta hat that minimizes the posterior expected loss which we can express like finding the argument A, which minimizes the posterior expected loss, like this. We should note that we condition on data here, right? So y is given and fixed, but theta is random. We have uncertainty regarding theta. We should also note that in an estimation problem, theta is continuous, so the expectation can be calculated like this. Now here is a self-assessment question about making an optimal Bayesian decision. My final remark in this video is something which is actually beyond the scope of what I hope for you to learn in this course. But I'm including it since I think that some of you might find it interesting. Also, we have touched upon most of this previously, here and there, so it might be good with a bit of a summary. So, like I said, there are two main frameworks for making decisions. It's the Bayesian framework and the frequentist framework. So in the Bayesian framework, uncertainties in the parameter of interest, theta, are described stochastically, which means that theta is modeled as random. Whereas in the frequentist setting, theta is fixed and unknown, and thus theta is deterministic. Now, a very common example of an estimator in the frequentist framework is what's called a maximum likelihood estimator, where the estimate is simply the value of theta that maximizes the likelihood after observing the data y. If you compare that to the Bayesian framework, the corresponding estimator is the maximum a posteriori estimator, which finds the theta that maximizes the posterior distribution, which is the product of the prior times the likelihood after observing the data y. So lastly, when it comes to optimality, in the Bayesian framework, we make decisions conditioned on the observation y and take the expected value over the parameter theta. In the frequentist setting, on the other hand, theta is deterministic, so there is no way we can average over theta. Instead, we study performance by averaging over y for fixed thetas. What we're saying here is that our estimator should be good on average for many different data, while we here, we are conditioning on a specific set of data y. So there's quite a difference in the optimality criterion for the two frameworks. We should also note the following things. Most Bayesians also study frequentist performance. So people who tend to use Bayesian framework may also be interested in evaluating their estimators in this sense here, where we fix the parameters and study how it performs on average over many sets of data. Also, there are many problems where frequentists agree that the parameters may be random in some situations. For example, in optimal filtering, which we will look at in this course, most people agree that the parameters are actually random and not deterministic. 
So this could be, for example, the motion of vehicles uh, that we discussed earlier.